Okay, this is a 2006, I think it's the CMP40D. Oh, there it is up there. Okay, there it is. That's to confirm. It has the Perkins diesel. I bought this machine in August 2018, but I never arrived to the kingdom. Oh, gonna have to do something tricky here. All right, I'll walk over here. Okay, never arrived in the kingdom till November, I think it was, the end of November. Okay, but in the pictures of the dealership in Saskatoon, this was not plexiglass. This was a real glass window. Oh, there's my finger. Okay. So the problem we had when it arrived in 2018, it didn't start. It took us a day to get it running on the trailer. So being a diesel, we plugged it in, we put the heat to it underneath, and it finally got. So it's never been a starter right from day one. We thought it was a fuel issue, and... It turns out to be it's electrical. So I'll do a quick video here how to start it. Okay, the first thing you got to do is turn the master switch on, which I've already done. And we've replaced the keys and everything and bypassed. So this toggle switch right here, okay, that's wired directly to the injection pump solenoid turnoff. But if the machine starts and run, it will not go into gear because of the safety items, which we're finding out is down here with all this here. These are little few reset fuses and stuff. Notice the different colors because I'm colorblind. So what we do is we unplug them and plug them in differently and then it'll start. Okay, so the first thing you do, it's going to be a little awkward here. This is more of a video for the guy hauling it to get it started. Turn the key on. That light is on means it's going to start. That means power to the injection pump. And under here, we have an electric fuel pump. But it has issues, like everything else in the world. So if you don't hear the fuel pump, you reach in and give it some love taps. Okay? So you have the fuel pump running. Oh. Little safety thing here, you gotta push it down. I should have the staff videotaping me. All right, so you can hear it. Oh, gotta move this around here. This isn't going too good. Okay, hit the start button. See, there was a voltage drop and the light went off, so that means the safety overrides have taken over, so that injection pump is not gonna start. So we hit the fuel override. Okay, and there we go. It's up and running. Okay, but also too, if you take this off, there's no gears. That's a safety override. Okay, so now you go have a coffee. Yes, go have a coffee and let it warm up and then it'll start on its own. Okay. Okay, in the kingdom here, we've been running the tire chains on the forklift for the last year. Okay, or two years, okay. We had a flat tire on this one. You can see the paint marks. You got to line everything up. We had a nail go through the tube, okay. I don't like patches on the tube, so I bought a new tube. So it's right here. So I figured the next time I get a flat tire, I'll just replace it. So these are the spare tires that come off a of scrap forklift here in town. The rims don't bolt onto this forklift, but the tires are there. And these are the items we have extra for it. So this is the original canister style forklift that, or fuel filter that is a pain in the ass. You can't get filters. It's been upgraded. The heater's been removed because of the fuses or the relays are tucked up in the dash. So it was taken out so we could access. We have the extra filters and we have the safety item to hold you in the seat, which comes off first. And the seat sensor is bypassed because we're trying to look out the door to use it around the yard here so as soon as you take your butt partially off the seat it uh, puts it in neutral or something so it's bypassed okay on this side of the forklift it is a three stage with a side shift but we took the lever off for the side shift because we have no side shift okay so the fellow borrowed my this machine back uh, in september last year and he decided when the mast was up in the air, there's a valve direction thing or whatever uh, manifold for the hoses for the mast to go up and down. He decided to smash it off because he shoved some steel in there. 
So the hoses were removed and that piece was removed and he took it to Winnipeg and promised me he'd fix it and send it to me. I mean, he'd be my best friend. Well, a year later, we still have no pieces. So we've chained the fork solid so there's no side shift, okay? But that's just a minor de detail, it's just some hoses and a little manifold block. In September 17, 2020, we broke the pin that holds the fork. Just a minor detail. And we have the light here. See, that one's complete. This one here, we have no bulb. So we took it apart and you know that we can't buy at the hardware store here in town. So that's just a minor detail. Okay, down here, this is the fuse for this fan here. So if you've got no fuel pump and you, you don't hear it and you try to hit it a couple of times, check the fuse because these fuses are cheap nowadays made in China. They sometimes pop. No idea why, but that's the way it is. I wired the fuel pump to it. So it's just another thing of safety or what we have to do at the end of the world. Okay, also too, when I'm videotaping this, it's just above zero, like freezing. So I didn't use the glow plugs this morning. This thing will start. I've kept it in a heated shed. When we found out 15 degrees and the thing would start, but wouldn't go into gear. So we cranked the heat up in the building to 20 degrees, then it would start and go into gear a lot easier. So we, that's when we're trying to figure it out. So let's try a start here. The override is off. Watch the light. Okay, so that means there's no power to the injection pump, so it will not start. Hit the override. Okay. Look at that. Strange, eh? So I'm colorblind, and that's what I've had to do to figure out how to make this thing run. The dealership and the people of the internet were no help in getting this thing up and running. Okay, I went and had a coffee while it warmed up because it is chilly up here. So let's see. Turn the light thing on. Light comes on, you can hear the fuel pump. Okay. Okay, also note there wasn't a voltage drop that dropped the dimness or the brightness of that light. So that's, that's what we're thinking. After a year, we thought it was a fuel problem, but it turns out it's a voltage. And I took a dislike to this machine because I was buying a Zoom Boom. And at the last minute, I changed out to buy a forklift so a, a company, an exploration company from Australia could use this forklift as a rental to move the core around, like pallets of drill core. But in the end, they screwed me for about $85,000, so I took a dislike to this machine. So I was supposed to sell it last year, but the deal fell through, so now I'm hoping it goes bye-bye. Because I'm not going to put it in its little shed here and heat the shed up to 20 degrees for this thing to start and run to, for the little amount we use it. So we're going back to the old way, since I am the king of obsolete, we're going to drive the loader because that's all we're going to be moving the stuff around with the fork. So we don't need the big forklift all the time or the green forklift. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Have fun.